as we have spawning down here in the bottom position. Give it up for Luth. And his opponent got a couple of probes where they probably shouldn't be. Give it up for Psy Storm. Yeah, making a little bit of a walk for himself. Uh, this is a very early probe, but there is no gateway off the back of it. So this is just a nuisance probe, as I like to call them. I'm just going to be trying to block that thir that uh, natural for as long as possible. But you know what? This is North America, guys. Spawning pool. First, it's the safest build on this server. So he will be able to get those six across the map quickly so that he can, you know, try to put on a little bit of pressure. Psystorm kind of does understand that this might be the case. Okay, there we go. Had a little problem with the sound, but he's going to understand this is the case. He sees these lings, and from there, he's going to just finish off the wall. Short, simple, and to the point. You can't see the game. Oh, oh, uh, Drain Franzi, there is a, uh, Here, let me just say that in chat. Yeah, while I'm trying to say this in chat, uh, we do have the Zealot kind of just dancing around the cybernetic score. Really just getting beaten down here. A couple of adepts will be on the way as uh, you know, Sleuth will get the surround on the Zealot, forcing this second, uh, the second uh, pylon to go down right there. Might, if he's not careful, lose the Cyber Next Core. I think at this point, uh, Sleuth is just going to go for it. Will he have enough? At the very last second, he does snag that, so that will delay Warp Gate. Which was on the way. And now Psystorm is down. Only just now popping off that second Nexus. Oof, this is not looking good for our red Protoss here. As he's going to be looking to do a little bit of counter damage across the map. But we do have the Queens. A couple of additional Lings at home for the defense. So the Adept is going to be able to make it out alive, but he did lose his Compadre. Some good Spore Crawler Micro. Going to keep some of those drones alive. Actually just giving his life for a little bit of extra glory, which did not happen. Now, he is going for the Warp Gate here. That's kind of important because that means there is less gas which did kind of delay the Stargate a little bit longer. Um, it kind of depends. Sometimes you do want to get the Stargate up and maybe get out a Phoenix or a, an Oracle first and then go into Warp Gate. You know, uh, small things like that I don't really think are going to make a difference here as he did save a little bit of gas by going for the Adepts instead. Um, obviously, Adepts a little bit less gas intensive than, say, stalkers which you do see a lot of the time to clean up that overlord on the natural behind this we do have the void rays coming in he spots the stargate and he knows what's coming out of it uh, if you take a look inside you can see the void ray uh, warping on in. So behind this, we do see that he's not going to be investing too, too hard into the Void Rays early on. As he's already got the Twilight Council coming on in uh, with the additional gateways. 
He will get in there with the Oracle, gets about four kills. Uh, the magic number is about five to six. Make that Oracle really worth it. But keeping it alive for the Revelations is just as important. Now, Sleuth is worrying me a little bit here because the way he's setting up, he will he will be droning up a little bit more, but with that Roach Warren, it really opens up the possibility for this aggressive timing off of maybe not completely saturated third base. And since he did go for the spawning pool very early in this series, that kind of tells me if... Uh, it kind of tells me that his playstyle might be considered a bit more aggressive. Just overall. Nice little pickoff. Gonna get the Nexus as the Void Ray will have to be microed back there. Only gonna chip the paint. Once again, Sleuth is gonna be just sacking these links to try and get that. Realizes that it's no good. And it will back on out gonna look at kind of the supplies here uh side so i'm currently in the lead with 29 just but that's mostly just a bunch of adepts and those adepts aren't gonna really have as much utility here in just a little bit as that roach count starts to climb do you see the banging nest has been finished up uh, almost finished as well so with that you can just really get some good connections on these adepts and stop the snowball so here we go first shade in going straight for the natural we'll get three four workers off the bat a couple more will be pulled away but it's not going to be enough just yet as they will be going to the third base for their next big volley drones are pulled right into it and this is actually getting quite a bit of damage and what i like about this as well is that he's not over committing a lot of the time with a Protoss player, you'll see that they, you know, try and go for that next big, a big warp in into the natural. Um, they kind of morph in right on top of the roaches. And it does look like that's what he's going to be doing. Uh, just going for a little bit of extra kills, but he will be sacrificing the adepts almost completely here. But he's not reinforcing this. He's just getting up to that next stage of Charge Lot Archon with Storm to deal with the Hydralisks and to deal with the Banelings. So he will have a good follow-up to this. It kind of set up, and the amount of damage he's doing is actually fantastic. Now, pretty much dead. Wait, how many gateways does he have? Okay, he's got about uh, about seven there. That's a good number for this stage in the game. As you keep going, you obviously want to be adding on more and more so that you can always have that kind of warpin ability no matter what stage you're in. The depths are going to be coming in once again. They're just, you know, they're just throwaways. And now for Sleuth. Or sloth I don't know how he pronounces it he's on he's getting his fourth base up a little bit later on because of all that aggression um, he's getting all his upgrades a little bit late on the Evo chambers I have to say I think that will come back to hurt him just a little bit but one thing I would like to see is when he does throw down that hive timing because that's gonna be a pretty important because with this strategy the best way to deal with it is to have lurkers on the ground Just kind of deal with the zealots the archons can be shaded out and you know a lot of uh, the lurkers can actually just tank some of those storms to get into that positional play so that's why i think hive is going to be the most important thing for him uh, because you do need those upgrades make the lurkers the best Here we go, Psy Storm. Pretty good army. This is can be pretty scary. I don't really know if Sleuth will have enough here with the storms. He's gonna have to micro his little Zergy heart out. 
Let's see, here we go. Um, uh, Templar going a little bit too far forward, I've got to say, but a big storm going to connect with a lot of these Ravagers. It looks like um, the right flank, however, did not even get touched until the very last second there. So now Psy Storm out of storms. I think he actually lost a couple of them before they could even get their shots off. He's just going to keep reinforcing this. He, that third base location does mean that he has a much more forward a spot to reinforce from. But I think from here, Sloth should be feeling pretty safe and maybe even looking for a little bit of counter damage of his own. He has those zealots going to be running by, heading straight for the third. The war prism as well, just kind of setting up, waiting for the army to be out of position. Looks like this will pull a lot of those units home uh, for Sleuth. We will start to lose the drones just slowly as the Bailing is going to be coming towards the third base, which is pretty much Fort Knox right now. Yeah, good pool. Good pool as well. Just going to make sure that uh, he doesn't lose any of workers and he detonates them on a pylon safely. The war prism just got forgotten until just now, but unfortunately there is a spore crawler. So that won't be able to get in there as easily. Like he is sending a couple of hydras as well just to make it as annoying as possible. So making the best of a bad situation. He's just going to do a small warp in into the fort. That's not a hive. We are about 12 minutes 37 uh, seconds into this game. And the hive is still not complete. He's relying on uh, the army that he has right now. And he does have a pretty big one. Taking a look at that army supply. 127 to 92. But I feel like he's just giving way too much room for a Psy Storm to get up to this very scary carrier count. And even now, Psy Storm can afford to lose a bunch of these units because that's just going to open up supply for the transition into the air. Oh no, that Baneling says, You shall not pass. be splitting off a little bit to head to the third base the main attack should be coming down here in the open because you don't want to be fighting in the choke points at all doing so means you will lose quite a bit to those storms okay he makes it in there doesn't really get anything uh it gets a couple of cannons it looks like but that's about it I think this is the kind of big problem for him is that he keeps pulling back almost everything to deal with these small run buys and that's just really delaying this for as long as humanly possible. So here we go some big feedbacks all over the Queens the care interceptors gonna fight what they can Storms blanketing the Banelings in the front there's just not enough on the ground to finish it but I think there's not that much anti-air either for a sleuth he's gonna have to focus fire down those carriers with the queens gonna remax on 27 on 27 hydras but i mean it does look like nice is gonna be wanting to push his luck push his advantage and go straight for the main or i can't count the third So now, Cystorm's big problem is he can't really advance too far forward. I don't think uh, he has everything that he needs for that just yet. But uh, this is going to be a good opportunity to kind of put on some pressure as uh, those Hydralisks don't have any support in the front. Once that Baneling count comes in, however, that's when you got to back up. You don't have any Storm energy just yet. Uh, 
Those are powerful, not overpowered as everyone says. The storm coming up some of the creep. Setting up a huge concave is our third. Great rolling in. He did go up to hive in all of the confusion, which is great. Necessary, it's important. actually gonna just try and find these angles the hydras are out of position expecting the attack to come from the bottom um, if things get too dicey he can recall but he's got to be very careful in doing so it looks like he doesn't have any observers uh i don't really like the ultras transition i think there's enough in the front to kind of tank the tank for everything and the carriers are going to be the biggest threat all things considered, some of those hydros as well going down. The Zealots running face first into the Banelings. That is actually a huge mistake. And now Sleuth will try and fight those Interceptors straight on. He's got 13 more Hydros on the production tab. So he is just going pure Hydra to try and deal with this. Nice one. We'll have to back off. I'll say, I gotta say, I'm feeling like this game is a little bit slow, uh, slower um, for Sleuth because, uh, you know, he's done a couple of big attacks, but he's always kind of just stayed back for the rest of the time, making sure that he doesn't throw any advantages that he may have. In terms of upgrades, he, is, he does only have plus one Carapace coming in with his plus three. So that means that he's going to take a lot more damage to the upgrades on this uh, now cloaked army. You know what? I feel like when you make DTs and you put them under a mother a mothership, they should get uncloaked, like a reversal ray, essentially. Those DTs will actually be able to get quite a few hydralisks, as uh, there's no detection with this army at all. How many? Uh, how many overlord overseers does he have? He only has one, and he just split off quite a few hydralisks to go down there to the fourth. Psy Storm will take the game as uh, Sleuth realizes that he is very far out of position. Right. Good start to the day. Welcome, welcome everyone. What our next map is, it's going to be Oxide. Okay, so a couple of things that uh... Yeah, uh, they're asking if uh, they can see their skins in game. I don't know uh, if this mod actually takes it away from them able to see it but no that big a pin there's my pin and here we go spawning in the top position he had a strong start, but he just couldn't finish it out. Give it up for our blue Zerg player. 
Sleuth. And his opponent down here in the bottom. Give it up for Psystorm. Don't forget to attach your stream on uh, star, star, star. Not do that. All right, so uh, Cystorm once again did send that early probe out, and he did uh, he did take he did delay that natural for just a little bit longer as Luth just going straight for the third base. Now I don't think there's any real attack that can come his way that can hit before the creep will spread out that far and before the third base really does get dropped. So I think that's kind of just kind of just more Sleuth's way of making sure that he doesn't slow down in terms of his economy. Because um, as you guys know, like especially at this level, GM high masters, you do need to make sure that you're somewhat competent in uh, keeping yourself cool under pressure. I think the biggest pressure is just knowing that there's a probe hanging out anywhere near your base. As we can see that drone. I'm gonna, just going to have to morph the spore crawler. Not the biggest of deals, but it's still a little bit of a nuisance having to spend the minerals um, in that manner. First step going to be making its way across. Sees the lings, sees the third, sees the queen, and backs out. He might just uh, might just use that shade to head away. Don't I don't foresee this finishing. Yeah, that's just a just a scouting shade. Like it is going to be a void ray play this time. We'll have to just, uh, keep an eye out for how many he decides to throw down. I don't see an additional Stargate coming in. So it might just be this first one going into Oracles so that he can get some additional damage done. And yeah, there you go. So basically, this uh, first void ray is just kind of there to get rid of some of the vision of Sleuth. Killing off the overlords is such an important deal because it will hide any army movement that you go for. Now we do see the third base going to be a little bit under threat as these links kind of just hanging out on hold position. I don't think they got the memo that uh, after you start getting attacked you're supposed to back out. But I digress as they will head on home for the oracle. There is a spore crawler in position, so this shouldn't get too too much as long as Sleuth is paying attention. Which he is. And so two workers going down. Okay. Nice. Follow-up is the common Twilight Robo facility. So, we, it, uh, from the way that this is going, it looks like we'll just have the charge lots come on in. I think that's kind of the best option. You don't really need Blink as much versus, uh, versus Zerg as you would 
versus a Terran player. So just getting that charge nice and early is going to keep you safe from any sort of uh, Zergling runbys that come on down. But I think Psystorm actually has a, a little bit of another move in mind as he's got the gateways coming on in. He's got the Immortals popping out and he will have built up quite a bit of uh, shield battery sentry energy. Which will make such a scary attack wave. And if he can hit this timing before the roach count is substantially large, then that's going to be really hard for Sleuth to deal with. I don't even think Sleuth knows about any of this. He would never able to get into the main base at all, essentially. Trying to get some of these probes... This will pull the army over to the third base. Gets a surround on the Adepts. But can a Sleuth afford to lose these Zerglings is the important thing here. Keep in mind, he's been droning up quite heavily, so he might not have a huge, a, a huge bank to deal with. Never mind, getting used to the new overlay, sorry. But he's just not really making too many roaches he's trying to save that gas for the hydras and their upgrades so kind of just taking a look at this he's on 24 army supply and this attack is going to hit him very hard sentries might just force field off the ramp he's going to go straight for the third base the warpism going to allow for reinforcements at the top here Big warp in of roaches might not meet up with the army because it's right here at the third, catching quite a few of the drones as well on the retreat with that energy. He will get the kill. And I think from here, he can kind of just push his way forward. There's not really that much of a defense for Sleuth. Look at that, even being patient so that he can kill off the reinforcements at the third base. Now Sleuth does have the army supply advantage, but at the same time, you know, those immortals in the backfield are great. There's plenty of zealots to flank for them and just get on top of the ravagers in the backfield so there won't be really that many biles that you can utilize. And even this run by is gonna get caught very, very quickly. As we do see the High Templar transition. Sai, you've got to pay attention. Sai! Okay, took a little stumble right there. Costing him three additional probes. Honestly, I think he has a very dominating position. As long as he doesn't throw it away with a bad engagement. Yeah, that's a lot of storm energy right there. He can even morph in maybe one or two Archons just to help out. There you have it. His next big attack is going to be on the way. The Warprism. That's not a Warprism. That's an Immortal. Something tells me that name isn't really going to work if he stays around there for too much longer. Doing his best to kind of just set up this concave so uh, Sai will have to rotate around onto the rock formation. I'll have to see if he does decide to kind of just tank that down a little bit. One link. Forcing the defensive warp in, but here we go. Once again, trying to engage into that choke point. Taking a lot of hits here on that High Templar. With the, the rotation around to the other side of the rock. Trying to break down the century energy. But there is still so much energy left on this Protoss army. The storm's going to help with the retreat. As he gets the third base once again. Oh my goodness. That is a huge pickoff here for Scythe Storm. Bailey's getting caught in back as well on this. They will get the connections only on the Archons. Will force the recall. 
at the very last second might lose the immortal no he saves it okay a little bit sloppy by a side storm there he lost way more than he uh, essentially had to but i like this move he does have these small warp ins gonna go straight into the main base and look for some more work as he's setting up his fourth he is equal on the base count as soon as that hatchery is finished Sky Storm. Um, unlike the previous game, his sky transition doesn't isn't off the back of a uh, of a kind of a strong pushes. Uh, so he will have to be a little bit more careful here. A couple of run bys. Get to do what they can. That's always nice to get those wherever you can. Now we have that additional war prism. The three barriers at a time, as well as the additional robo facility. He's getting pretty much everything that a Protoss player would want. It's like Christmas for him. You know what? He still has to open the present. And with all this purple wrapping paper, that is a really, really tall order. The sleuth, I do like that he's might be going up to Hive here pretty soon as he's got that infestation pit on the way. I think the only way you're really going to be able to beat this army is with those Hive upgrades. Okay, Lurkers. That's nice. That's going to help deal with the ground army. But honestly, I think if you're going to stick on Roach Hydra for this amount of time, you do need to kind of get a, a higher Hydra count. Now, remember, carriers, they do have a lot of utility, but in smaller numbers, they just don't have what they need to uh, be as effective. And here we go. The Bane is going to be coming in. The Zealots charging to their doom, but they will survive. Just going to expend them on the cannons and the nexus on the fifth oh my goodness i don't know if that was really worth it there for sleuth like he did send a couple of ravagers around will pull the army back over to the third base but once again sleuth is being very patient with his main force as a, he's not really overextending in any way. We do see the seesaw going to be coming in, though. Honestly, this is exactly how he should have played it in the first game. You have to kind of get these double prongs to deal with the slow, immobile army of the Protoss player. But it looks like Psystorm says, I don't care if you kill that base. I have more. I'm going to go kill all of your bases at the same time. So it is essentially a little bit of a base race here. Uh, I'm going to recall the, the uh, carriers home to the third base, but that might actually be a mistake since there's only three of them. The Storms going to blanket the Hydralisks. So he will be able to hold on back, but uh, you know his army is not in position to deal with this over here on the other third. So... Yeah, he's going to take some damage here, but it looks like Sleuth not paying attention. Isn't going to go for the probe line just yet. Now will start to get some. But that could have been so much worse. Die. Feels like he can keep the pressure going. He loses the War Prism, which is nasty, but... Here we go. The Hydras are not in position to deal with this attack coming in. Like he's being very patient. Going to clear up some of that creep as well, which is going to help out with further attacks. 
Now with the Lurkers, this is just a really impenetrable position for this ground army. Uh, the carriers, I don't really think the carriers deal with Lurkers very quickly unless you focus fire them down heavily. And they do have their upgrades, which will allow them to have that extended range. They don't have adapted talons, so they will be a little bit slower. As I say that, that's about to finish up. The carry is going to be yoinked. Storm's going to blanket a lot of this army, but... You know what? I think as long as Sleuth can weather this storm, there's not really too much else the Protoss can do here. Okay. A little bit of time right there, but you know what? Zealots do have to have a hobby. So now both players are maxed out overall. Uh, in terms of upgrades, you do have plus one, atta uh, plus one attack on those Hydras, but you don't really have too much else to help with the lurkers the carapace upgrades a little bit delayed as Psystorm does have plus one air weapons as well as plus two ground will be going up to plus three attack as well so overall upgrades they can seem like they're not a very important thing but when you're going up against a maxed out air toss army you really do need as much as much shields as possible and by shields, I do mean armor. Just because they can whittle you down very quickly. Uh, especially with the fact that uh, you don't really have that many corruptors on the way. You know, he's been pumping them out one or two at a time. Where are the observers? Got one with the army. And one over here. The DTs will start to wail away on this. Uh, but the Overseer going to be coming on in the Carrier's. Going to get right on top of the Lurkers, and this is the move that he needs to break this position. All the Hydra's completely out of position. Now, there's actually no detection with this until those Spore Crawlers drop. Swarms going to blanket the Lurkers. He's going to focus fire those down. The Carrier's getting so low, and those will pop. GG. Psystorm goes up to match point. Very clean games from him, you know? I haven't really seen any sloppiness out of it. Sleuth is playing it very defensive. And I don't know if you can really afford to do so in this matchup. Um, play defensive, that is. Just because if you let your opponent get up to that very scary uh, air army... You know, he just really didn't have what he needed to deal with it. Okay, so we're going, going in to Jagannatha. For our potentially last map. Gotta have some faith in Sleuth, though. Don't forget, guys, we are going to be playing the semifinals and the finals today. Our next match is going to be Oil Town versus Josh Says by a TVZ. That's going to be that's going to be a pretty fun one. I think uh, North American TVZ is one of the more exciting matches just because it's very scrappy, very kind of kind of fun to watch with that aggression. Uh, PVZ in North America, it, it can be pretty good. I enjoy it. Uh, not as much as PVZ, obviously, but, you know. A lot of small nuances in this one, and you know what? These guys know it because they are playing it, spawning in the bottom position of Jagannatha. Give it up for Storm. And his opponent, 
up here in the top representing the spooky ghost of cryptic the sleuth oh actually this is a team kill i did not notice that because he doesn't have his clan tag up or uh you know not clan tag but this little uh floating head and they're in the top okay nothing sticking out to me about this one this is a pretty normal build here for both sides uh, you know the thing about jagannatha is that while it is such a large map um, if you're going around the sides it will take you a while to get to your destination down the middle you do have those acceleration zones so i think uh that makes it probably the second or third closest rush distance down the middle in the map pool right now. So, fun little fact for you right there. That spawning pool coming up. The wall is almost complete for Die Storm and the probe. It's just being a nuisance. Nothing really going. It's not going to keep. Like, excuse me. Sorry about that. If you die to a probe, then uh, you've got some work to do. But, you know, I think uh, Psystorm has been favoring that big Stargate play. This is kind of one of those maps where it, this, it would be very good Stargate. And there we go. It is going to be Stargate once again. So let us see what he can get done with that. Depth as well. I'm going to shade in here, seize the lings, he's the queen. He's kind of counting the drones as well, just to make sure that this isn't sort of fake, a fake natural. As you know, sometimes you do see people throw down a natural or a third base just for the extra ling production before they sink their teeth. A very aggressive ling all in. Right now. A couple of additional lings coming out. Probably just trying to play it safe in case it is some sort of a Depth Glaive build or something like that. But no, it's not. It's going to be Oracles once again. So the Spore Crawler could go down. There you go. And the Void Ray, again, just kind of dealing with the one Overlord that's out on the map. Luth keeping all of his or Overlords close to home essentially I'm safe Let's get a surround on the Adept. That's pretty good. He won't be able to get too much else off the back of it, but you know what? That does open up the possibility for a, another small attack over there to get a kill on that Nexus later on. The Oracle is still kind of flying around, using its revelation to keep an eye on the main base with those queens. And I think from here, we're actually going to see full-on Zest style of play as we got that second Stargate. And the Void Ray production is in full swing. So, what does Sleuth have to do from here? Already, he's making a lot of the right moves. He's thrown down his Evo Chamber, which will allow him to kind of stay equal in terms of those upgrades. And he should be throwing down that Hydralisk Den as soon as the lair is complete. That's pretty much it. Uh, you know, you will have to be a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more proactive on the map. Just to make sure that your opponent can't transition 
quite comfortably into Storm Charge, which is the next big stage of the six, of, uh, the six Void Ray build. But overall, I do think he's got what it takes right now in order to hold this. Looks like the drones have been pulled away for quite a long time, though, so they're not mining. A lot of just... Just a lot of uh, indirect damage by canceling the mining, even getting five workers. Look at the units lost here. Yeah, six total in the game. The depths will start to go down. The probes should be pulled to attack here just so that they uh, they don't start to fall. This is some good counter damage here. And it's full on confirmation that this is indeed the Void Ray play. Got the infestation pit on the way. So he should be going up to Hive here soon. I think, uh, I think it'd be pretty good to get some Vipers with this composition. Yeah, now we kind of just have this little bit of lull in the action. Nothing much else going on. Right, we do have the Templar Archives on the way with plus one attack, so Storm should be coming out soon. Uh, I think Sleuth does have a pretty big opening to kind of go across the map with this, as we do see a lot of these queens are getting kind of put together. Does he have Overlord Speed? He does not, so he doesn't have the ability to do the German Taxi. But maybe he doesn't need to. Maybe he just needs to waddle his way across the map um, but if he's going to decide to do that, he's going to have to do it soon. As I mean, once the uh, ground army starts to get built out, just really won't have the same option to go for an attack. The supply block there, losing quite a few of those overlords. Going to focus down the morphing hive. Might lose a void ray for it, but he feels like it's worth it. The queens will make it in for the transfusis, and that's going to save it at the very last second. And that was a very big blunder for Psystorm. If he would have gotten that, that was almost GG amounts of damage. But uh, now back at home. He is still equal in terms of army supply, but without those void rays, kind of adding in that little bit of additional DPS and that little bit of a threat. There is a chance for Sleuth to come in here. He's also got over 80 army supply difference. So if he gives any more room to Psystorm, Storm, that would be a mistake. You do see 10 lurkers going to be in the production. This is his moment. This is his chance. The Queen's just getting further and further forward, just waiting for the army. Revelation gonna go down as well, just revealing that this is a very dicey situation. Photon cannons all around. He's just gotta set up this base to hold on for a little bit, but I don't know if he's gonna have the ability to. Here we go. Lurker is dropping right on top of this transfuse. Going to keep those alive. The Zealots out of shields. They will use up quite a bit of that shield battery energy. Now it's just a very slow, methodical push here for Sleuth. The units of Psystorm are trickling in. He will get a couple of additional storms. Uh, the Queen's getting low, but not getting fixed. Uh, finished off and that's the biggest problem 
Field battery overcharges pop, but what is it popped on? Absolutely nothing. One big warp in of Zealots. Just gonna get absolutely wrecked by the lurkers in the backfield. He has no detection to deal with this. And I think from here, below 100 supply, Sa uh, Sleuth has put himself in the series. GG is called. So he puts himself on the board. Will he be able to pull it back? He needs to win the next three to go on. And these are going to be some weird maps to do it on as we have Pillars of Gold coming on up. So the rest of our maps are Pillars of Gold and Romanticide for this best of five. Get the players in the lobby. You know what? I hope everyone is having a really good day. What you guys think of IEM today? Uh, who's your favorite player? Who do you think... Who do you think is going to make it out of the round of 24? Uh, I didn't see which person is going to each group. But you know what? After the games today, I think our boy Ragnarok or Alpha X will uh, do some good things. Gonna have some, he's going to have some tough times, though, because he's going to have to, at some point, potentially face Astrea, another Alpha X boy. What about the X players? But you know what? We've got a couple of cryptic players here in this semifinal. So spawning down here in the bottom position. Give it up for Psystorm. And his opponent. Hanging out in the top. He is Sleuth. So I don't know how I really feel about this move for Psystorm. Yeah, we've seen him bring this probe out. Pretty much every single time, that's an additional probe. Um, not the one that throws down the pylon, so that does hurt his income just a little bit. And you really don't gain too much of it on a map like this, because that third base, even though it's a little bit far out, the creep can spread pretty quickly before you really will have the opportunity to attack into it. Uh, so you don't really, don't really gain a lot for, for the investment. Now, Psystorm, again, he's not really going to be doing anything anything too crazy here. We are more than likely see just that Stargate play again. Um, I don't really see him going for a Glaives on this one. But you know what? He might, he might surprise me. Sleuth, however, really did surprise me on that last one. Saving the Hive was the game-winning move. And uh, if he can keep, kind of keep that up, just stop being as defensive as he is. Maybe send a couple of Ling runbys here and there to slow down your opponent so that they're not getting up to this big, huge uh, Stargate army would allow him to kind of play it out a little bit closer to the chest and also... Just kind of set the pace for the game. I think the player who sets the pace in a PVZ is the one who can come out top 8 out of 10 times. And those other two times, it's Errol, essentially. Yeah, there you go. Stargate, once again... Not really, not really too surprised about that. Except as well, just bog standard Protoss. See, I don't know if uh, these guys cheese very often on ladder. Sleuth was the only one to try it in the in the game number one, but since then he's been just trying to play this very straight up, methodical macro game.
we do get a game to a game number five i'm wondering if these guys will put it all on the line Thank you, Old X Scratch, for the follow. You know what? Sleuth does get a very good scout of this. He saw the the Overlord um, Oracle come out. You know what? The best way to confuse me, just make two units with the first letter. It doesn't matter how different the name is. I will always confuse them if they're close together. The Oracle will come in. The Spore Crawler is in position as well as the Queen, so he won't really get too much. Only two drones for the pull. Also pretty nice. Give him like a momentary advantage. But the big thing for Sleuth is that he saw that right there. He saw the tra Twilight Council transition and the additional gateways, so he knows he's not going to have to deal with too many of those Void Rays in the front. Also, thank you, Sushi, for the subscription. You are the man. Hopefully, my emotes come in soon so that you can uh, have some fun with that. Waiting for it to get approved right now. So this is actually pretty interesting to me. We don't see Charge gonna be the follow-up here from Psystorm. He's instead going to invest in a very aggressive Adept Glaive timing, which I don't know if that's really the best option with how delayed it is. Because by the time the Adepts really start to snowball or when they really get across the map, you'll have that Hydralisk Den out you'll have enough roaches and just the fact that it's been spotted very quickly here by sleuth will give him plenty of time to prepare although oh no he's droning up oh boy uh this is not good actually as the adepts are going to meet absolutely no resistance over here on the third they don't even need to shade into the natural for this one. They're going to be able to get those queens. And the drones are on the run. Oh my goodness. This is about as bad a situation as you can get for Sleuth. As he allows the Adepts to get into a very, a very good defensive position. And they will just kind of be bouncing around here. The Roach Count will start to climb. But he can focus fire those down if he wants to. Now, a little bit of Miss Micro with the Adepts as well, just because he's not really been able to focus fire down a lot of these drones. So only five of them have fallen so far. I feel like he would have had the opportunity to get so many more uh, if he would have kind of just ignored the roaches and gone for the drones focus fired. But I digress on that point because he does have the third base up. He's got Storm. Charge has just now started, so he will have to chrono boost that out before his next attack. But he just has all these different tools that Sleuth really, I don't think he will be prepared for as this game goes on. That Void Ray kind of just hanging out, being a little bit of a nuisance. Doesn't have any brothers to help. As the Adept going to be just, just threatening the shade in. They have no chance of surviving if they do it. Just look at those queens. Army getting larger and larger. This Eyes may look equal, but it comes down to the storms. He has a lot of energy built up as uh, Sleuth slowly building up his Hydralis count. As you guys know, uh, Hydras, they're very good. They have a lot of DPS. 
but when it comes to stormy weather they would rather stay inside and have some hot cocoa like the adepts are gonna get cleaned up here on the retreat always nice but here we go sleuth is going to be going for a very big attack keep in mind there is feedbacks as well as the storms so those queens might not be as useful as you might think we do have the robo facility coming in very very late so there was not going to be any robo facility he attacked something right there i think that was a zerg you know what side storm is going to just go for the blanket here storms all over the queens all over the hydras the banes just now finishing off on their morph i feel like feedback would have been a better option uh, for the top of the ramp just get rid of a lot of these queens because now they still have all that transfuse energy on their way in Bailings doing their best they will get a connection with the high templar it's not enough to finish it off and sleuth while he has quite a bit here i think with the morphing in archons the defender's advantage is just a little bit too strong queens all going down and i think from here with a 20 to 30 army supply lead he will be able to push back onto the creep and close this one out you know the question is is he going to try that however as we've seen after a big attack he did kind of stay a little bit passive in the previous couple of games not really pushing his luck or his advantage as much as you might expect this time though i think he smells all the blood in the water the zealot's even going to get rid of a lot of these veins it's not a good idea to chase them down because you will need the zealots for the attack go the first full prey on the creep he probably wants to wait for an observer just in case there's uh, some hidden surprise for him uh, just dancing on the edge of the creep searching for that army see that now that he's found it he may lose the oracle but he knows exactly where the main army is and he can feel a lot more comfortable with this push Delt reinforcement's gonna be coming on in with a small little contingency, just trying to pull over as much as possible. The Banelings gonna get some good connections on top of the Archons. The Zealots, though, getting really weakened down. Storm's gonna whiff a lot of this army, but it will be enough to help push Psystorm back to the edge of the creep. I mean, from here, it looks like he's just gonna be going up to carriers. He's not going to... Like, not going to push any further in this this one they're going to look at it we still don't see an infestation pit so that means any any additional upgrades for sleuth will be nowhere to be had as a, he doesn't even have uh, any upgrades whatsoever on this army he is zero zero and trying to come in here he's just going to get sandwiched by this Protoss army. The Zealot's going to chase down almost everything. Storm. Going to clean up a lot of those Banelings. And I think... Yeah, I think... Uh, Psystorm holds this so generously. Okay, look at that. The 12 minute, 40 second, plus one attack timing from Sleuth. He was trying, uh, I think his biggest problem was he was very busy trying to overwhelm his opponent with just sheer numbers. And it just didn't really work out for him because his opponent does have plus two upgrades already. And what that means is that the Zerg units just absolutely melt and now we see Sleuth kind of just trying to play catch up here, getting a higher drone count, going up to, I believe, about 80. This last big warp in. And now his army composition isn't looking that good versus what Psystorm is bringing across the map. Going to have to rely on those Banely connections in order to make this work. 
even that I don't think will be enough the zealots gonna be coming on over here doing what they can as the bailings might actually find a lot of size storms economy here at this third just barely not enough to clean up oh my goodness the small moves here and there, I think, are slowly pulling Psystorm ahead further and further. And I don't I don't mean to say that Sleuth is dead. There are still a couple of possibilities for him to come back. But just at the end of the day, it's really not getting any sort of counter damage on Psystorm. Just take a look at this. A 5,000 uh, mineral difference and a 2,000 gas difference. Now with the zealots at the front we're there gonna do what they can storm's gonna be trying to get rid of this clumped up army good splits by sleuth going to uh weather the storm quite bigly but he will lose two bases for that and uh sleuth realizes that he's beat tells size storm to go get that win and gg is 